Alternative Radio. On today's episode, Missy and I are talking about taking, taking care, care of yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I'll edit that somehow. <laughs> Or we'll keep it that way. I don't Whatever. know. Whatever. It doesn't matter. Because we're taking care of each other right now, too. So, <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. The show is about to begin. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of On Finding Peace, and this is the podcast where Missy and I talk about daily practical life tips of how you can find your inner peace and happiness in life, and today we are talking about taking care of ourselves. So how's it going, Missy? Doing pretty good. No, no complaints. Um, I thought, uh, you know, as you and I were discussing the things that were going on in our lives, that this might be a great topic for everyone to hear and uh, hopefully, you know, kind of tap into that state of remembering that, you know, we get to do this. It's it's uh, it's something that will honor us and and, um, you know, help us love ourselves more and find that peace that we're looking for. Yeah, I totally agree. And really it is coming down to how much do I respect and love me for who I am at this moment Yeah. because I'm not going to want to take care of me if I don't love me. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like, yeah, what, what's the point if, if, if I don't love me, I don't care and I, I'm not going to do that. No. So, you know, I think it's so important that, in today's world, we're not necessarily taking care of ourselves. Although I think some people think they are, mm. um, you know, and in, in going after a lot of the material goods, uh, you know, to say, well, look how connected we are. You know, I can have the latest, greatest, right. you know, electronics or clothing or whatever it may be. But is that really taking care of ourselves? Right. Well, I mean, you know, to me, taking care of yourself is mental, uh, physical and spiritual, you know, and there's probably more than that. But those are the the main three that I like to focus mm -hmm. on. And, um, you know, sometimes I'll slack off on my meditation. So I know I'm not kind of like feeling that in tune with my spiritual side. Sometimes eat a lot of junk food or the things that I shouldn't be doing, or I decide that I'm not going to exercise for the day. And there's, there goes my physical and my mental, you know, is really, uh, really, it, that's the biggest one for me. Like, like, I mean, I can, I can skip a day of spiritual, I can skip a day of physical, but if I am off on my mental game, boy, does it throw everything else out of whack. And, you know, those are the kind of things that, you know, I think that the awareness of that and just, you know, monitoring those thoughts or observing those thoughts and the things that are going on up there, like can really help improve your quality of life. And um, I, I just feel like that's really important. It took me a long time to realize that, but mm -hmm. now, now I don't let it go by. Like, I just go like, oh, that was silly. That was a crazy thought or, or whatever. And instead of diving into it, I just kind of like recognize it like a wisp of smoke and go like, oh, okay, well, that was interesting. Thank you for sharing. And then, you know, move on with your life. Right. And I agree with you with those three areas of life, you know, and part of finding that inner peace is how in sync are we with those areas. Mm -hmm. And when one area is out of sync, that is going to throw us off a bit. And I'm not saying it's going to take away our inner peace, um, but I, I think it'll, you know, throw, throw us off in, in where we are. And you're well, smiling. Did, did smiling I say something? I heard something this morning. I was listening to Kyle Cease, and um, and it's not his line, but the guy apparently that he was quoting says, "If you pee in the pool, you are only peeing. You're not just peeing in one section of the pool. You're peeing peeing in the whole pool. So if one of those things is off, 
then everything is going to be off. Right. You know, and so I just, I was smiling because that brought that to my awareness and I thought that's, that's really funny and it's clever, you know, but it's relatable at the same time that we all know when you peed in the pool, everybody's swimming in your pee, you know? And so if one of those things is off, then everything is off is what I'm trying to get at. I'm, I'm just glad to know that, you know, when I'm waxing very philosophical and wise, you're thinking of pee. Um, so that that's nice. Good to know that. <laughs> Welcome to my world, Chris. I just def I definitely have that kind of mind that goes all over the place all the time. You know. Oh, I, <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, I'm just messing because I I'm, I kind of feel bad that I didn't hear that or think of something like that. Um, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I, I think it, it it's important, you know, to look at those different areas and to see where are we off and why are we off and yeah. what do we need to do, uh, you know, to work on that. Yeah. And, um, you know, as you and I were talking earlier, I month, month and a half ago or something, you know, I had a medical issue and we're still trying to figure it out. But one of the effects of that seems to be a little bit slower in, in the cognitive processing and trying to, consider things and um, just not totally with it as I feel I used to be. Mm -hmm. um, that could be age. I don't know, but it's different. So, you know, in looking at that, that doesn't necessarily take away my peace right. because I can sit back and say, all right, this is happening. Do I know why? And if I do, am I in control of working that why? And if I don't like in this case, that I can't control the why necessarily, but I can still control then how do I view it? Right. And that's what can keep my peace. You yeah. know, if I can't bring it back into sync with everything else, I can still view it in such a way that I can still remain at peace. Right. Perception is, you know, is a big, big factor in the way that you look at whether, you know, one of those three categories. I feel like, um, you know, you can take things and just, just a little opening up a little bit to it, not being exactly the way you say it is. And, you know, it can, can let that new thought creep in just as long as you're not attached. Right. Because they say when we're attached to an outcome, that's when we suffer. And so, um, in this case, you know, if you're attached to, you don't have an answer, then you might not find an answer and you're suffering. Right. But, and in other ways, like when we're attached to finding the answer and it's not coming yet, we're then again, we're suffering, right? And right. so that's not really taking care of ourselves. It's like, we, we don't have control over uh, as much as we would like to think, you know? Um, mostly to me, we just, we can only control our reactions and we can control the way we're thinking or the way we're seeing it. Yep, totally agree. You know, we, we, especially humans now in, in our current uh, world, I, I think we live under that false belief that we are in control of much. Yeah. We, we've like structured it that way, you know, that, yeah. that all of these things are under our control. Yeah. No, there is so much out of our control. Um, you know, and, and I think if we really sat down and thought about that, that very little we individually can control yeah. um, and it does come down to what you're saying is, is you know i can control my responses which includes yeah. you know my emotions my thoughts my words but really that's about the only thing you know i, I can control my behaviors which i'll also say would be my you know part of the responses right other than that i'm not in control of much of anything well, remaining neutral is key, no matter what you're looking at. If you're looking at like, oh, gosh, I'll, I'll be honest with you. You know, um, I've given up a lot this year, not in a sacrificial way, but because I wanted to to cleanse my body, to, to give myself a chance. But I still have that urge and hankering for sugar. So I still have an addiction there. Right. But I don't feel guilty about that. You know, I don't have any resentment towards myself for wanting to have ice cream or have a piece of chocolate. I just, I like to enjoy that. That's something that, you know, so whereas in the past, I really have like, oh gosh, I mean, like crap, you know, I'm, I don't look good in a bathing suit. I'm not happy with myself. 
Well, that's judgment. And that's not taking care of yourself. Like you're, you've got to be gentle on yourself. Like we have, uh, I cannot remember what book I read it in. I want to say it was Michael Singer's uh, The Untethered Soul, but I could be wrong. Um, what he says is imagine the voice in your head being an external per person. And if that person was not nice to you, how long would you hang out with that person? And of mm -hmm. course, you know, half of us would be like, gone. We don't want to hear nothing from you. See you exactly. later. But we do this every day. We're constantly beating ourselves up. We're constantly judging other people. And, and it is really a practice to not do that, to remain neutral about you know, the way that you're looking at people. I mean, like, you know, gosh, I, I prepare myself to try to make sure people don't judge me. Right. And I'm still working on that. So I'm a work in progress, mm -hmm. but you know, I got laundry sitting on my bed, by the way, unfolded, not put away, just put, brought out of the dryer this morning, but I hit it because I didn't want everybody to see it. You know what I mean? And so what I'm saying is like, who I mean, some people do that and don't, you know, they, they don't care if it's sitting in the background and some people don't want other people to see. And that's like a perfection mentality, right? And in order to relinquish that, look, here, look, um, if you're on video, you can see my dirty laundry sitting on the bed. But, you know what I'm saying? It's like, I, I love people. I love feedback and I love to love myself, but in doing things like that, I'm not doing any of those things. I'm not, I'm not giving other people the respect to have their opinion. I'm not giving other people, you know, or myself the respect of being like, look, I'm a, I'm a stay at home mom. I work from home. My kids are here. I just didn't have time. And now I get to go be on, t on, you know, a podcast. And instead of, you know, just letting it be, I, you know, I hit it. And so like things like that, that's me putting judgment on myself. That's an unhealthy thing that I'm willing to share because I'm willing for it to change. Yep. Does that make sense? And, oh, it, it makes sense. I mean, what doesn't make sense to me is the laundry made it to the bed. <laughs> Mine goes immediately on the floor and then you just pick out what you want, you know, from the floor. Yeah, um, you are so, <laughs> yeah, that, that made no sense to me what you just showed. So, um, but yeah, seriously, you know, when, when I talk to my clients, one of the first things that I explain to them is this is a no judgment zone okay. and, you know, I'm not going to judge them for what they're telling me because that's not my job to be their judge. That that's not my realm. But as you say, we judge ourselves all the time. Oh, yeah. So what I like to do is change the language. And we all know in today's world, language means things. Yeah. Change the language to using healthy and unhealthy. Right. Yeah. You know, so like when you're saying, you know, the eating all the snack foods and all of it, which I love and still do. And yeah. Um, you know, sure, I, I could look at that and say, well, that's bad for me and, you know, all of that. But that's judgment. I'm judging myself for sure. saying that's bad. I can look at that and say, well, is having a snack today healthy or unhealthy for me? Mm -hmm. You know, when was the last time I had a snack? Is this a low calorie, or low fat snack? Is this a sugar free snack? You know, th there's a lot of things I could go into that where I could say, well, you know, yeah, it's kind of healthy for me to have that snack today. Right. Another day, it might be unhealthy for me to have that snack. And, but and, either way, I'm not judging myself yeah. for having it or not for having it. And, and so here's my, my only qualm about that is that I believe that a lot of people do find the word healthy as a good connotation and unhealthy as a negative connotation. So, and I mean, even the way that I end up saying it still seems uh, you know, with judgment, right? Correction, it's behavior that needs correction. It's correction means that you're doing something bad or wrong in my head. Yep. So, I mean, it's just, we're trying to find different words, uh, when really what we need to do is just be neutral, right? It doesn't have to be good or bad. It, it can just be like, mm -hmm. I wanted it and I had it and, and I enjoyed it, you know? Um, but, you know, I get what you're saying. I like, I like your concept and I, I just can, I can concern myself probably with things that I shouldn't be, but I concern myself with that. 
our listeners might hear unhealthy as negative and healthy as positive. Mm-hmm. And, and I'll bet that they do most. Um, and I'll bet that many, if not most of my clients probably still hear that. Um, I think over time, if we continue to use that, we may get away from that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, mm-hmm. I haven't yet found that perfect way of getting away from that. Right. right. Yeah. Now what you're saying, you know, I, I also use in other circumstances um, when, you know, things happen to us in life, a lot of times, you know, I'll, I'll just use that neutral, well, it just is. Right. You, you know, it, it just happened. There's right. nothing good, bad, or otherwise about it. It, it happened. Um, or it is, or you feel that way without putting a, any other qualifier to it. It, it just is. Right. Um, gosh, I had something I was going to say, and then it just gone. Um, I was on your I think I'm picking up your energy. That must be what it was. Um, <laughs> there ain't much of that to pick up on. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, and so, so when it comes to taking care of yourself, like, like what are what are things that you suggest people do? You know, your patients and people that you work with. Like, how do you suggest that they start to change a behavior? In using, again, we go back to the healthy, unhealthy on, you know, my side, but in trying to find out, you know, what is their goal? So what what do you want to get out of this? And then we look at what are the things that are going to help you to get to that goal? Mm. Um, Generally speaking, I do encourage some sort of meditation every day. And when I say some sort, it doesn't have to be the traditional you know, sit in a certain way, play the music, light the candles. Right, that's right. all awesome. You know, and, and I do that too. And that that's great stuff. But, you know, if that's not for you, then find something that is for you. And then I'll help them, you know, through that. But we really need to find time in the day to just, and not even slow down, but actually just stop. Yeah. And really just observe what's going on, you know, around you. And inside of you. Um, I find that a lot of a lot of people that I I uh, speak to is is like their gym time is is really kind of like their own mental uh, meditation Mm -hmm. or like my walks in the morning. Not not that I don't meditate, you know, in my house or under a tree or you know wherever I do, but. I like to meditate while I'm moving, like to, to get that energy moving. And, and so I have people that are, are swimmers and they're like, I go to the pool every day and, and I swim and that's my meditation. Like, and I'm like, exactly. That's when you are, you, your body might be doing things, but your mind is quiet. Right. And so you're receiving that information. Um, yep. So I just wanted to throw that in there. Meditation doesn't have to be sitting on, you know, cross-legged on the floor. Right. Yeah. It can be, but doesn't have to be. Yes. Uh, I had a client a while ago that, you know, was telling me that they're having the hardest time to meditate. And until I probe deeper, I start throwing out, you know, some things. And then when I probe deeper, found out that his morning routine was to get a cup of coffee, walk out to his dock and just look at the water. Right. Perfect. But see, he didn't consider that as meditation. No, no, because and, in and his head, the meditation was the ohm and sit. And it was like, I can't do that. I'm like, but wait a minute, you're meditating every day. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it's that's the thing. It's like the the we make meaning right to things. Nothing has a meaning until we as humans make it mm-hmm. So, like the unhealthy, healthy conversation, the correction conversation, the right, wrong, good, bad. And even the meditation, like we make the meaning behind what things mean. So it yep. can mean whatever you want. It doesn't, just because an expert told you that this is the way you should meditate doesn't mean that's the way you should meditate or quote unquote, take care of yourself, right? You know, we all have different ways and, and crutches or, or things that help us facilitate being better, feeling better, doing better. I mean, I would consider music an addiction, Right. Because I love to listen to music. I love to dance. I love I mean, like I cannot get enough of good vibrational music. And 
I mean, if, if that was a drug, that would be a bad thing, but it's, it's music. So nobody yeah. considers it a bad thing. And so I guess what I'm trying to say is like, your way might not be my way, Chris, and, and my way might not be anybody else's way out there. So just, you know, be kind to yourself during the process of whatever it is that you're doing to, to work on taking care of yourself. Uh, exactly. And, and I couldn't agree with you any more than that. You know, it, it's and, and that's really where it helped to guide people is we've got to find what works for you. Yeah. You know, and sure, you can read experts or hear experts or, you know, whatever. Try what they're you know, proposing. That's fine, because if you're really not sure where to start, that's a great starting place. Yeah. Try I what they all propose. The time. But in the end, <laughs> it's got to be yours. Yeah. Yeah, I do it all the time. I mean, like I said, uh, you know, just in this this conversation. Sorry, my dogs. <laughs> um, you know, I listen to Kyle Cease. I, I really enjoy him. I mean, I've gosh, I've I've grown up through my spiritual evolution, listening to Tony Robbins, Abraham Hicks, reading books, um, Don Miguel Ruiz. I mean, you you name it. Um, oh gosh, I'm thinking of. Uh, I can't even think of his name now. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I just, there's all these people, right? And they give you all this knowledge and all this information, but being in the flow and to me, being in the flow is, is kind of letting that energy come through you and following your intuition as to what's best for you. The only thing that puts resistance on it is your thoughts. So if your yep. thoughts, if you can change those thoughts, you can change that perception you can begin to take care of yourself better. And matter of fact, uh, I remember that thought I lost earlier. I grabbed it. I remembered it's coming back to me. Perfect. Something about um, this recently is, is that the reason that we're not healthy is because we're already eating on our bodies, right? And so that is causing us, even if we run and we're exercising and, and instead of loving what we have and being grateful for it, we're, we're, mentally demolishing it right and then we're expecting that when we go to the gym we're going to get healthy we're going to eat salad we're going to be mm -hmm. better you know and instead of just loving ourselves where we're at kind of what is right then you know and just being grateful for it and watching it get better like on and it's crazy to say this but even the eating right and the exercise it probably wouldn't even matter if we can get our, our mental game right. We could probably get thinner and look better and feel younger and more vibrant if we could get our mental game right. To me, it's all about attitude. That's it, yeah. Yep. But it, it's interesting as you were talking because uh, just the other day, and this kind of corresponds to a couple episodes ago on this podcast, we talked a bit about dogs and mindfulness and um but so I, i'm having this uh session all my sessions are uh video and this client is you know complaining about the stress in their lives and the busyness of their lives and you know we're trying to work through that and then they show me um with their camera their cat and their cat was laying on its side just spread out on the windowsill and my client's comment was, she's living her best life. Yeah. And I looked at my client and said, and when do you live your best life? Right. Because, you know, why, why are we always looking at, you know, others, you know, like saying, mm. well, others can do this and or my cat can do this or, you know, what is that within us that would make it our best life? Yeah and start thinking about that for for yourself and and it doesn't have to be huge you know i mean some people might say well you know i can't like go on vacation lay on a beach for a week or whatever i'm not saying that in right. in your everyday life what can you do even briefly to that relax. can allow you to say yeah i'm living my best life <laughs> um you know yesterday I, I had a lot of meetings. I was rushing in between things and I found that I had 20 minutes in between these two meetings. So getting things ready for the meeting, I still had about 10 minutes. I set an alarm for 10 minutes and just closed my eyes. Nice. 
And I figure what was going to happen is going to happen. I fall asleep, don't fall asleep, whatever. There was no expectation to this. Yeah. Just yeah. I'm ready for the meeting. I have 10 minutes. I'm going to sit here and just close my eyes. Right. Um, so I think we all, regardless of our lives, can find that five minutes, 10 minutes, whatever it may be, that what can you do, which is part of you living your best life? Mm, yeah. Yeah, because that's... And that should be taking care of yourself. Even, even, even if it's, like you said, if it's five minutes, that's taking care of yourself. I might not be able to squeeze out more than five minutes of a day, but... I'll tell you, that's why I get up earlier than my kids in the morning so that I can go for a walk. And, and there's days they go, can I go with you? And I'll, I agree. But for the most part, that's my time. Like, that's when I mm-hmm. like to go. And, you know, it's funny because my significant other said to me just the other day, he's like, well, I know you like to go do that by yourself. And I'm like, of course, I would love for you to come. I'm not going to turn you down. You know, it's, it's still enjoyable if you're there, you know? And at the same time, like when I've, I know I've got to work and I've got a long busy day and I've got lots of meetings and, and, you know, uh, interaction with clients, you know, I can never predict what the day's going to hold, but I know that if mm-hmm. I get up and I, and I do that, it makes me feel like I filled my own cup first and then I have time for everybody else. Well, and, and that's where it comes down to, is, you know, when, clients have told me or even just friends and family you know taking care of myself is just selfish um but it goes to what you had just said if if we have an empty cup yeah what are we giving to others yep you know if somebody was thirsty and you give them an empty cup how how is that doing anything to the person who's thirsty no so we do have to fill our cup before we can offer that cup to somebody else yeah. Well, I mean, what's the saying when you get on the airplane? You know, if the masks drop down, fix your own mask first. You know what I mean? If you can't breathe, you can't help other people breathe. <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, exactly. And and it, it look at that's an old way of thinking. Like to me, you know, no judgment on anybody who does think that way, but it is an old way of thinking that that we're selfish if we think of ourselves. You know uh, that that's. That's a me mentality, right? And and for me to be a we mentality, I know that I have to care for myself first, mm-hmm. or else I won't be able to care for anybody else. And just like any anything else, I mean, there's moderation, and I look at it as you know motivation. Yeah. You know, so sure, you know, I mean, there could be somebody who you know wants to spend all day in meditation, and say, well, you know, nobody can bother me all day because that's my time because I have to. But is that too much? Yeah, yeah. And again, it's individual. I mean, I'm not saying it is or isn't, but we have to look at that and say, is that, you know, too much? Where now there is some selfishness going on. Yeah, balance. Well, what is the motivation for taking care of yourself? Mm, Right. Yeah. Well, they say, uh, you know, I took this motivational, not motivational, transformational class and they say that the ego does things for four reasons, right? To make you look good, keep you comfortable and safe, um, make you, oh gosh, now I forgot. Jeez, Chris, stop doing that to me. <laughs> keep you looking good, keep you safe and keep you in control and make you be right. Thank you. And, uh, you know, like, think about it. If those are your motivations, then you're probably not coming from the right place, you know, or yep. the, the, the place where you're going to live your best life. How about that? <laughs> it's not going to give you the inner peace you're looking for. No, it's not. It's definitely not. But, yeah. So what about a listener? So me, well, that's what I was just thinking. See, <laughs> our, our energies just sink there. <laughs> We were both both going in the same direction. <laughs> what do you got? You got something? I might. Um, so I was thinking maybe to uh, have the challenge for somebody to figure out what is your five or ten minute living your best life and um, let us know what it is and how it worked for you and how did you find the five or ten minutes? Yeah, that's absolutely awesome. I love it. Because you know what, you sh- you guys sharing these ideas with us, and us being able to put them out there for other people, like you could give somebody like, oh, that's a great idea. I mean, like, that's, that's, 
you know, it helps the collective to, to share ideas because, and guess what? It's free. It's free to share those ideas. So, yeah. And that's how, as you say, that's how we learn. That's how we grow. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't have all the answers, but I know other people out there have answers that I haven't thought of. And we put all those answers together. Yeah. Have a million different choices. (laughs) Exactly. So (laughs) that's awesome. Awesome stuff. Well, thank you very much for taking your time today, Chris. And thank you to our listeners for joining us today. Yep. I appreciate your time. And I just want to encourage your listeners to, uh, you know, like this uh, podcast wherever you see it and give us some comments and suggestions, share it with your friends. um, And uh, we will see you in the next podcast. All right. Bye-bye.